Right guys, this video is about the cos rule, or the cosine rule. It's a little bit more difficult to prove than the sine rule, but it's not too bad. Okay, first of all, what does the cos rule say? Well, if you have any triangle, ABC, and I've labeled in side A, side B, and side C, all opposite their, their angles. Now, the cos rule has three different formats. It simply depends on what side you want to make the subject of the formula. So if you have A squared, that will equal to the other two sides squared, which will be b squared and c squared, minus 2, bc, so the other two sides, and then cos of angle A. Now, how do you know which angle is there? It's angle A because angle A is between the sides b and c. So everything on the right-hand side is b and c and then the angle between that. So if you look at b squared, that will be a squared plus c squared, minus 2 times ac, and then cos of angle B, because angle B is between A and C. So if C squared was the subject, C squared would be B squared plus A squared, minus 2AB, and then cos angle C, because that's between the two sides. So it doesn't really matter which format you use. You have to know how to set up the cos rule. So let's have a look. In an exam, they could say to you, prove that in, in, a tri in any triangle, now I've called it ABC, they could call it anything, and I chose the version a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos angle a. Now, that could be anything. That could have p, q, and r in it. So it matters how you then set up the picture that you draw to help you prove this. So if they haven't drawn a picture for you, it'll help if you draw a picture. Now, whatever angle they're using in the cos rule, the rule of thumb is you put that angle in the bottom. So if this is angle a... I'm going to put angle A at the bottom of the base of my triangle, and then B and C, it doesn't matter which position they take on. Now, to start off, we need to label the sides of our triangle. So A, B at the bottom would be called length C, and then B and A would be opposite their angles. Now, what we're going to do, as in the sign rule, is construct a perpendicular height H. So we're going to drop him down to A, B at the bottom. Now I'm going to call the point where this hits AB, point D. Now AD, which is the length on the left, I'm going to call baby D, which means DB would be the whole length, C, minus the bit which is highlighted in red. So DB could be written as C minus D. Now if you look at triangle DCB, which is the triangle on the right, Pythagoras' theorem will tell you the hypotenuse, which is A squared, is the other two sides squared added together. So a squared equals c minus d squared plus h squared. But if you look at the triangle on the left, which is acd, Pythagoras will tell you b squared equals d squared plus h squared. But these heights are the same thing. Just as we proved in the sine rule, this is one perpendicular height. So if you have two different formulas for this height, they must be equal. So if we rearrange our first formula, we can get h squared is a squared minus c minus d squared. And if we rearrange the second formula, we can get h squared is b squared minus d squared. But these h's must be equal. So b squared minus d squared must equal a squared minus c minus d squared. So if I just multiply out my bracket and I take the bracket to the left-hand side, b squared minus d squared plus, it's a plus sign because I've added the bracket to both sides, and I've multiplied out the bracket, must equal a squared. Now you'll notice there's a minus d squared and there's a plus d squared, which means they'll cancel. So we're left with b squared plus c squared minus 2cd equals a squared. Now you'll see this is very close to the cos rule. There's the b squared plus c squared, and the a squared is the subject of the formula, and there's 2c, which means this d is not what we want in the formula. In place of that d, we need b cos a. So if you have a look at my triangle, there is d, there's a, and I've circled b. So it's very easy to write an equation involving those three. I'm going to move to the top since I ran out of space. So in that triangle ACD on the left, cos of angle A, because this is a right angle triangle, you can use normal trig, 
and cos is adjacent, which would be D in that triangle, over hypotenuse. Now I can rearrange this, I can multiply by B on both sides, so D is B cos A. Now that's exactly what I needed in my formula. So all I'm going to do is go and replace D with B cos A. There we go. And now that's my formula done. So you just have to set up your triangle in the way that will make you derive the correct format which they give you in an exam. Now let's look at an example. If I give you a triangle STR and I've given you two sides and the included angle. Now that's going to be the key thing to realize you're dealing with the cos rule. Two sides and the angle in between. Because remember when we looked at the right hand side, it had two sides and cos of the angle between those two sides. So let's set up the cos rule in this triangle. First of all, the question says determine the length of PRT, which makes sense because that's the third side. So I'm going to call that side S, and I'm going to call the 7 cm side R, since it's opposite angle R, and the 6 cm side T. So the cos rule says that S squared is R squared plus T squared, the other two sides squared, minus 2RT times cos, the angle in between, which is angle S. So I'm going to substitute the 7 and the 6, and the cos of 40 degrees. Oh, I put an angle on top of it. My apologies. So S squared, and I calculated it to be 20, comma, and all the decimal places. Don't forget to keep them all on your calculator. And now it's quite easy. I square root both sides. So key thing is two sides and the angle in between can be very useful in the cos rule because it can help you find the third side. So the cos rule involves three sides and an angle. So example number two would be an example where I give you the length of all three sides which means the cos rule can help you find an angle. So this question says determine the size of angle L, which means I just need to set up the cos rule in the way to help me find angle L. So opposite angle L is baby L, baby J and baby K are opposite their angles. Now because L is between J and K, everything on the right hand side of the cos rule will involve J and K. So, L squared equals K squared plus J squared minus 2KJ cos angle in between, which is angle L. So, a very simple substitution of all the values that I know. Now, the important thing here is to realize, once you've squared each of the terms, that there's two separate terms. You cannot add the 144 and the 64 and then minus 192. The 192 is attached to cos of angle L, so there's two separate terms. So what you need to do is minus the 144 and the 64 on both sides. Then I can simplify both sides. Now you always land up with the negative equaling a negative. Because then, once you've divided by the negative 192 on both sides, you land up with a positive ratio. You can't possibly get a negative ratio. Because this angle, well I suppose you could if it was acute. I mean obtuse. So we'll have to do examples of that in class but you can never land up with something bigger than 1. So in correction, you can land up with a negative, and we'll have to do examples of that in class. In this case, it was positive 0, 0,5625. So I used the inverse of cos, which is shift cos, and I got angle L to be 55,77 degrees. Make sure that you learn the cos rule. It is the toughest one of the three 2D trig theorems to prove, so make sure you study it hard.